Imagine that AI helped us advance to a type two civilization. We would be traveling through the galaxy, visiting planets we never knew existed, and living in gigantic spaceships that were only possible in sci-fi movies. However, after using up all the energy our planet has to offer, we begin looking for other sources of energy, which is where we find out that our sun has so much power that we start building a Dyson sphere around it. Keep watching as we uncover these gigantic space megastructures, and at the end, you will find out how humans will find the materials to build them. The reality is, before we can advance as a species, we need more power, like a lot more power. And no, even if we use all of the energy our planet has to offer, it still wouldn't be enough. That's why in the future we must develop a Dyson Sphere if we want to continue our technological advance. A Dyson Sphere is a theoretical megastructure proposed by physicist and mathematician Freeman Dyson in 1960. It represents a way for an advanced civilization to harness the total energy output of a star to meet its energy needs. A Dyson Sphere is a structure that surrounds a star, capturing most or all of its energy output. It works because solar panels or similar devices collect the energy radiated by the star, converting it into usable power. The collected energy could be transmitted wirelessly. Advanced materials would be required, potentially mined from asteroids or other planets. The immense energy could also smash that like button, just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, the immense energy could also power large-scale computations, enabling advanced AI or simulations. Just to give you a perspective of how much power the sun provides, it emits about 3.8 times 10 to the 26th power watts of energy. Capturing even a fraction of this would provide vastly more energy than Earth currently consumes. With this seemingly unlimited energy, we can finally begin focusing on interplanetary travel, which is why we will need generation ships. A generation ship or a colony starship is a spacecraft designed to transport a population of people along with the resources and infrastructure needed to establish a self-sustaining human settlement on another planet, moon, or celestial body. Colony starships are a cornerstone of humanity's vision for interstellar expansion and survival beyond Earth. These ships would be equipped with life support systems to sustain a population during the journey. They would be powered by advanced propulsion systems like nuclear fusion, antimatter engines, or solar sails for long distance travel. In order to survive years and years of space exploration, the ship must be able to recycle air, water, and other essentials for life. Not to mention, the ship would need to create artificial gravity within rotating sections or other technologies to simulate gravity and reduce health risks associated with microgravity. Another way humans would move through space in the future would be by using these gigantic O'Neill cylinders. O'Neill cylinders are huge space homes shaped like long tubes. They spin to create gravity so people inside feel like they're on Earth. The walls of the tube are where people live with land, houses, and farms. Big mirrors bring sunlight inside so there's light and plants can grow. They're made to recycle air, water, and waste so everything is reused. Each cylinder can hold thousands of people, giving them a safe place to live in space. These space homes could help with overpopulation and give humans a way to live beyond Earth, like starting new towns in the sky. And since we're on the subject of interplanetary travel, we might need wormholes if we want to achieve it. Wormholes are hypothetical structures in space-time that connect two distant regions of the universe through a shortcut. They are a fascinating concept in physics and popular in science fiction, often depicted as tunnels allowing for faster-than-light travel or instantaneous transportation across vast cosmic distances. But to make matters simple, imagine the universe as a flat sheet of paper. Every point on the paper represents a location in space. Normally, to travel from point A to point B, you would move along the surface of the paper, covering the full distance between the two points. Now, fold the paper so that point A and point B overlap, 
This folding represents the creation of a wormhole, a tunnel that connects two distant points in space by bending space-time. Instead of traveling across the paper's surface, you can now simply step through the tunnel and emerge at the other point, bypassing the longer journey across the paper. This would shave years and possibly decades in travel time, which is why they might become very commonplace in the future. Because humans would need more energy, they would undoubtedly tap the vast energy resources that are black holes. This is where Penrose spheres come into play. A Penrose sphere is an idea for getting energy from a spinning black hole. Black holes spin really fast and have a special area around them called the ergosphere, where space-time itself moves. The idea is to send particles into this area. These particles break apart and one part falls into the black hole while the other escapes with extra energy. The sphere would be a machine or structure that does this over and over, or it could collect energy from the hot gas around the black hole. We might even see an ergosphere at the center of our Milky Way galaxy at some point. But if we want to reach other stars, then we definitely need a way to communicate because texting isn't going to cut it. Interplanetary relay networks are like space communication chains that help send messages between planets, spacecraft, and Earth. Instead of sending signals directly, they use satellites and orbiters to pass the message along step by step. For example, on Mars, rovers send their data to orbiters flying around the planet. These orbiters act like mail carriers and send the information back to Earth. This system helps with weak signals, long distances, and when planets or moons block the view. These networks are super important for exploring space, letting us control spacecraft and get updates from far off places like Mars and beyond. Speaking of other planets, humans could grow so advanced that we will actually be moving planets around the solar system and even stars in our galaxy. Stellar engines are big machines that can move or change the path of a star. They could be useful if a star is dying or to move a whole star system to a safer or better place. One idea is the Shkadov thruster, which uses a giant mirror to reflect part of a star's energy, creating thrust and slowly pushing the star. Another idea is a Niven ring, a structure around the star that collects its energy and might help in moving the star. While these ideas are just theories right now, they show how humans could one day control stars for exploration. With all of that power, we might even be able to construct Matryoshka brains. A Matryoshka brain is an idea for an extremely powerful computer system built around a star. The concept is inspired by Russian nesting dolls, where smaller layers are inside larger ones. Each layer of the system would have its own computational power. The outer layers would collect energy from the star and the inner layers would hold advanced artificial intelligence. This setup would create a super intelligent system capable of running complex simulations and solving massive problems. The goal is to use the energy of an entire star to power a brain-like system that could control and optimize an entire star system. As we advance, we will eventually build a second Dyson Sphere around another sun, which is where we will start a Dyson Sphere network. A Dyson Sphere network is a concept where multiple Dyson Spheres or similar structures are built around many stars in a galaxy to capture energy on a massive scale. Instead of just one Dyson Sphere around a single star, a network would involve connecting many energy harvesting structures spread across the galaxy, each designed to gather and store the star's energy. But to build all of these megastructures, we couldn't use the resources on Earth. We would need to build orbital mining stations. An orbital mining station is a facility in space that collects resources from asteroids, moons, or planets. These stations are set up in orbit around a celestial body where they mine things like metals, water, and rare elements. The mined materials are either processed and stored or sent back to Earth or other space habitats. Orbital mining is important for space exploration because it helps provide materials needed for building, fuel, or research without relying on resources from Earth. 
It's an idea that could make future space missions easier by getting what we need right from space itself. Do you know any other space megastructures we didn't mention here? Tell us in the comments below. Here's another video AI enthusiasts loved watching. This is AI Exposed, demystifying the world of artificial intelligence, one video at a time.